We want to welcome you to our Leavenworth City Commission meeting. We ask that you turn off for sound of all cell phones. Our meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 7 p.m. and at midnight. At this time, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance followed by silent meditation. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our parks and our parks and recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the mental and emotional health of all citizens, and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community and region. They build active communities that aid in the uh, prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally and physically disabled. Parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide uh, vegetative, vegetative buffers to development and produce habitat for wildlife. And our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the uh, ecological beauty of our community and provide a place, a, a place for children and adults to connect with nature. Now, therefore, I, Jermaine Wilson, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, do hereby proclaim the month of July 2019 as Leavenworth Parks and Recreation Month. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. On behalf of our entire Parks and Rec Department, I'd like to thank you for this proclamation. Uh, July, we, we like to say every month is Parks and Rec Month, but, but July is actually a great time because uh, schedules start to wind down a little bit with all the youth uh, baseball and softball and soccer camps being over. So I'd just like to invite the, uh, the entire community to come out and enjoy our wonderful parks. And of course, with the heat, and it's going to be a hot weekend coming up, uh, the Walmart Aquatic Center is, is up and going full strength also. Thanks again for the proclamation. Next item on the agenda, old business. If there's no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt the June 25th, 2019 uh, minutes. I'll second. Motion has been seconded. <clears throat> Begin voting with Commissioner Pricinger. Aye. 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 Motion carried, 5-0. Uh, next item on the agenda, second consideration ordinance. Second consideration ordinance number 8106, amending chapter 122, vehicles for hire. Mr. Mayor and Commission, our city clerk, Carla Williamson, will handle this, um, although nothing has changed from the first reading, but she'll recap briefly what uh, this item is about. Uh, yeah, Mayor and Commissioner, this item um, we discussed at a study session, um, just kind of some changes to make to kind of um, reformat it, um, make a few changes as far as some of the requirements that we, we had in there that weren't really written into the ordinance and some of the things that were kind of outdated that were no longer needed, um, setting minimum um, uh, fares, um, requiring a light on the vehicle that says it's in service or not in service, just various things like that. Um, and as um, Mr. Kramer said, this was presented uh, for first consideration at the last meeting on June 25th, and we've made no changes since then. This doesn't cover uh, Uber or Lyft, right? Just uh, like that's, taxi cab companies. That's correct. And Uber companies. and Lyft and those type of companies are um, are regulated by the, by the state. state. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other comments? If not, this requires a roll call. Be voted with Commissioner Goddard. Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Both passes 5-0. Next item on the agenda, new business, uh, citizen participation. Anyone that would like to address the commission, we ask that you come up to the podium. State your first and last name and your address. 
Good evening, everyone. How you doing? Very well, thank you for asking. My name is Crystal Elliott. I live at 303 Arch in Leavenworth. Um, I've come to ask what the committee's progress is regarding um, beekeeping in high density residential areas. And wanted to gently remind y'all that it's up to us to make sure that the bees survive. And um, the United States Department of Agriculture says one in every three bites of food that we eat, bees are responsible for having pollinated those, you know, vegetables. Um, there was also a 40% decline in bee production over this past winter. And um, I think it's critical for everyone to do our part. So have, have y'all been working on maybe changing the policy of the city to allow apiaries in high density residential areas? areas? Well, that's, uh, we, well, uh, we, we can. Staff has prepared a memo for the commission, and, and I think they have it, and they're reviewing it. It'll be up to the commission to set it on an agenda. Okay. What what specifically, Ms. Elliott, what specifically would you like to see the, the commission do? Um, allow people that live within um, the R-1 or R-1-6 mm -hmm. district to uh, um, have honeybees, you know, have apiaries. Right. Mm -hmm. um, my husband... Um, presented the, sure. the commission with a bunch of um, urban beekeeping policies and practices that many mm -hmm. of the other larger metropolitan cities use. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, just some guidelines mm -hmm. to provide and, and everything. And it, it would just be a good thing to help. Sure. I think I've given some feedback to the city manager on the map. Did you already send it out? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But so my... I mean, I think we can devote, I would like to devote a few, 10 minutes to this in a future study session. This one commissioner's view, I think it's important, and uh, that's what I'd like to do. I feel like it's important. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. You. Appreciate I'll it. I'll set it for a study session. We'll let you know when that is. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thanks thank for you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Mayor, Commissioners, good evening. Hello. My name is Harold Carl Peterson. I live at 1001 10th Avenue here in Leavenworth. Uh, I have a situation where basically uh, I'm in, a, in a, what you call a rock and hard place. One is, I don't know on that my property lines, okay? Two is, and that uh, is, uh, I live, there's a road in that, that goes beside my house, okay? It goes down to the pl power plant. Across there is, is a wooded area, okay? I don't know how far back it is in that, uh, my property line is on that wooded area. The city in that wants me to clear all that out. I've already talked to several companies. They want anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand dollars to do all that. I just don't have it. I'm a veteran. Uh, yes, uh, I've got disability. Yes, I am paying uh, on a house, but I'm paying it through my disability. Uh, I have done as much as I can in that uh, physically because my legs are not, uh, I used to jump out of helicopters. And anyone that ever served in the military knows your knees are shot after a certain amount of time. I can only stand in that for a certain amount of time. I can do only uh, so much work. Also on that, the fact that uh, 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 there was an area in that that I was going to clear and because of this last storm, uh, it got, a uh, tree got hit and it split in two, making it pretty hard for me not to uh, do anything. Uh, I have uh, purchased just recently in that a chainsaw to try and cut as much as I can. 
I have contacted met uh, Colonel Ralph with the uh, uh, both the American Legion, I mean uh, DAV, and also the VFW, and he said that if I cut uh, cut the wood into that, as long as uh, he'll only take uh, sizes like that, uh, he can take it to uh, uh, veterans uh, areas and that where they need the wood. Uh, that's going to take me time. Now the city wants me to uh, completely clean this up and that uh, uh, within 30 days. It's not going to take 30 days for me to do everything by myself. I don't have, uh, like uh, a lot of other people, have, have $10,000 or $15,000 or $20,000 in savings. I don't have it. I just don't have it. And for me to do it by myself and that, uh, it's going to take me at least uh, a year or more. Now, uh, the area in that uh, that they did want me to do and that, I was planning on uh, disking that up and basically in that uh, uh, proposing in that uh, for uh, different churches for them to come in and have what you call a garden area and that because they, a lot of churches don't have property uh, and they don't have area in that big enough to make a which call city garden and I was going to uh, basically allow them and that to come in and use that property and that uh, for their use free of cost no I wasn't going to charge anything but because of the tree coming down it kind of made things a lot different so you mean I'm, to, go ahead. Sorry. I'm basically in that uh, they want everything <coughs> taken out there within 30 days. Were now, you, Mr. Peterson, were you cited uh, for the tree or for the for the property? whole thing? Okay, and, but were you cited? and also in that uh, uh, for uh, uh, for an area in that uh, I don't know if it's my property or not. Uh, See, uh, I don't know my property line on. Well, you could probably go to the county or GIS, give an approximate. But if, if you actually have to have it, you probably have to get a survey. And I'm not recommending that you do that, but there's a cost. But your house, your uh, 1001 uh, 10th Avenue, so that's one block south of Spruce on the east side. And there's a little cut back there that goes to that power substation, correct? Yeah. Now, does your property line also go in that former railroad right away there? I don't know. But your backyard does butt up against that. There's like a. The railroad used to run through there. Uh, there's no I, tracks there anymore, but uh, you can I, that I, uh, like I said, I don't know on that. Uh, uh, I've never on that uh, gotten a. So you're I've being, had several. You're people. being cited for that tree. When did you get the letter? When the well, tree. Well, it's the not uh, only the tree. It's all it's the, the branches, paper. all the bushes, yes. everything, and mm -hmm. that. Wants <clears> they <throat> want me to clear all that out of there. I, I understand. That. I'm just curious. Did you get the letter after? Did the Tree breaking, getting struck by lightning, precipitate the letter. Then, then you no, got the letter, no. and they said, "By the way, I got uh, I got two letters in that, and I was uh, working <clears throat> on basically in that uh, uh, day by day, and that uh, when when it, the weather was uh, <clears throat> good enough, and my legs and that uh, yeah. weren't killing me, uh, 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 trying to uh, like put it in garbage bags right. because they will uh, the city uh, garbage will not take anything if it's not in bags. And have you spoke with code enforcement about an extension? Uh, basically, uh, uh, they they basically gave me and that uh, person's name and that to uh, to hire to do it. That well, person and that quoted me and that uh, uh, what was it uh, eleven thousand five hundred and some dollars. I think the best thing that we can do right now is reach out to our staff to see if you can provide us with some information um, in regards to the property. Yeah, and we, we can, can try yeah. to prepare something um, for the commission on that. Yeah. Like the dates of the notices and, mm -hmm. and, and get you a little more information on what exactly was in the notice. Um, we have a ability to have well, some flexibility. We're kind of we're limited by a reasonable extension course, right. that the commission would have to probably weigh in beyond that. Hey, yeah. But we gotcha. can get some information to you. Yeah. Uh, on top of it, uh, the uh, last letter uh, stated that, that uh, uh, I 
I've got to pay a fine in that of $200. I have no problem in that paying that $200. But the thing is, is uh, if push comes to shove, I do have poison, and I will use it if I so have it. Gotcha. Can you please give us a couple of days, and we'll contact you with some information. I right? just want to, I want to ask something for clarification. Right. You're saying the city fined you $200. I I could be wrong, but so we can't fine no, you no, we, unless we, we advise, performed a service. Right, it would, it would, the judge would impose it. Yeah, the judge may have done that, not, not the city. Uh, I'd never uh, seen a judge. Yeah, I don't think this has been filed in court. Yeah, so I don't. I haven't seen a uh, judge, have but I have work on that. that. We had to. Um, not at we this. We don't know, or we can wait. For we the have it at this time, though. No. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out the of $200. Yeah, just give us a just couple of days. Just give us a little yeah. time, Mr. Peterson. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, okay. Uh, that's why and then I'm bringing it up now. Yes, sir. Because, uh, <coughs> uh, like I said, Ned, is uh, the only options I, uh, I'm seeing is the spraying. And I don't think anybody wants that. Yes, I don't sir. want it. No. But no, I'd like them that to avoid that. Yes, sir. Well, I'm hoping a Boy Scout troop or something is watching tonight, Mr. Peterson. They may give you a call. I don't. I'm not associated with the Boy Scouts, but maybe something like that would happen. Be helpful. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm concerned. This didn't grow up overnight. Right. You know, it's probably been there since the, the ground was created and the trash went through. It. And why all of a sudden are we in such a demand to get it tore down or cut out? You know, let's first find out whose it is. Yeah. Let's use some some common sense on this. Absolutely correct. I agree. And like I said, Ned, is uh, I want to make sure, Ned, uh, uh, exactly in that. And that's why in that uh, uh, I would love to ha uh, find somebody that's reasonable to do me a, a what you call private uh, property assessment. That way in that I do know in that what is mine, what isn't. And that way in that uh, uh, we can resolve that part of it. Part of it, yes, sir. but the other stuff we're getting rid of all that stuff. I uh, I just can't do it in thirty days. All right, thank As you, sir. you can see, I walk with a cane, and the reason I do uh, walk with a cane is because my knees are shot. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. You're right. Next item on the agenda: oh. uh, review property at seven ninety five Spruce. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, I'm going to turn this over to our city attorney, David Waters, to give you a briefing on where we are with this. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. As you'll recall, um, several meetings ago, uh, the property at 795 Spruce was on uh, your consideration list for, for demo, for continuance, and, and all of that. And uh, at that time, uh, the city placed it on the demo demolition list, and the uh, city staff then proceeded to engage contractors uh, to, to begin that work. Um, that has not been done yet, of course. A um, couple of meetings ago, maybe it was the last one, a representative of the church um, appeared and asked for uh, some more time uh, from the commission, um, indicating they did not receive the certain notices and, and all of that that went along with it, um, indicated that some work had started on the property. My understanding from staff is that no building permits for that work have been pulled, however, though that there has been uh, work being done on that even without the issuance of building permits. About a week and a half ago, <clears throat> someone on behalf, an individual on behalf of the church or the property owner, uh, filed a, a, a pro se motion with the uh, district court here in Leavenworth uh, requesting a uh, restraining order or an injunction against the city demoing this property. Uh, the court uh, held its hearing on that today. Uh, I was not able to attend myself. I had one of my associates attend. I understand that Ms. Hurley was able to attend, uh, though, and can, can speak a little bit more to some of that. Um, broadly speaking, let me tell you a little bit about what, what, you know, what the court uh, did today. Uh, they had some discussion on standing, on whether the, the parties had proper standing in order to bring this request. Um, there's discussion about uh, the lack of counsel on the uh, legal counsel uh, for, for the uh, petitioner. What Judge King ended up doing today was continuing the matter until August 21st. Um, and the reason given for that was to allow uh, the church or the property owner to retain legal counsel. Now, I, I want to explain a couple things that things the judge did not do. Uh, the judge did not issue any restraining order and did not issue an actual injunction uh, on the city in this case. 
Uh, so the city's demo ordinance still technically stands. Um, I would qualify that by saying that, you know, even though there no ruling on that was made, I would probably say this is the judge's expectation uh, that by the time uh, the next hearing comes up that this would still be a live matter in some way uh, that it would not have been rendered moot uh, by the city demolishing the property, yeah. you know, say tomorrow. Um, that's probably somewhat implicit in the judge's order, even though it was not explicit in, in what was done. Or the judge would expect that this matter would be settled in, in some way. Um, I know that uh, representatives of the property owners are here tonight to address uh, the commission on what it is they would like to do, or what they would like to proceed, how they would like to proceed. You know, I think that the city probably does have a couple of options. I don't know that you necessarily need to make a decision on any one option tonight, and we, you know, we may have other meetings where we need to talk through this more. Um, you know, options could include you know, doing nothing at this point, uh, keeping the building on the demoing list, and but you know, not exercising your rights as to the demolition. Um, you could uh, continue your demolition in accordance with the current schedule that you have. I think that would again be, you'd have to consider what the judges would think about that. So I guess I should say that would probably be option number one, continue on as you're going, you've got the demolition going, you know, but keep in mind kind of what the judge's order was. You know, another option would be to really do nothing at this time, keep it on the list, uh, but just hold off on enforcement, hold off on demolition until after the judge's hearing in some way. Who can say what could happen you know at that you know it may be the case that council is obtained council could request more time so you know things could you know drag on more in some ways um another option where i think there was at least some discussion about at this at the uh in the court today was whether um staff should offer a remediation agreement again to the property owners uh, with some sort of deadline, uh, you know, it could be, it had to be a reasonable deadline, you know, it could be before the August hearing, it could be after, but some sort of remediation agreement on what needs to be done, and then you'll know, present that to the judge, you know, if the, if the offer is not accepted, that would be what we would go and tell the judge that, you know, hey, we offered this and it was not accepted, so the judge would ask you to, you know, proceed, or it has been accepted, and, you know, the timeline that we've agreed to for, for that um, remediation is X date, and you know the judge may continue it or he may dismiss the case at that point a lot of moving parts here on that and so there I would say there's not really a, a, a fixed decision uh, you may need to make tonight but I wanted to at least make you aware of that and some of the options would be available to you and also I understand that again the property owners are here and may want to address you as to how they would proceed moving forward the only thing I would add is that if we did go the mediation, uh, remediation agreement route, the traditional remediation agreement that we do through this process just um, uh, deals with building condition, um, but the remediation agreement that we would ask if the commission were to authorize that would also take into account the requirement to get building permits, pay building permit fees, and then um, refund the city for costs already incurred through the demolition process, which we went through after proper uh, and full notification. Okay. Would you like to address the commission, Pat? Uh, can I ask some questions first, Mr. Mayor, of the attorney? Yeah, yeah, before okay. and then we'll hear from how, much, how much money do we have in this and all the shutoffs, uh, et cetera? Do you know, Mr. Pamela? Um, what we've been invoiced for so far is about $1,900. There is some that we have the city has not been invoiced for. Um, the our actual demo contractor has um, done some mobilization work and going out to the site. They have not invoiced us for the work they've done, even though they haven't taken it down. They have put in time and work into that, and we have not been invoiced for their work so far. But the utility shutoffs, um, the environmental review, uh, those types of steps that we normally have to go through uh, add up to about nineteen hundred right now. And approximate, I know Mr. Burdett's not here, and you don't know how much would building permits cost approximately, yeah, just a ballpark. Um, Mr. McDonald might have a little better idea. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know what building okay. permits. But we're we're probably probably I, I would see what works better. Yeah, so yeah. we're probably, look, right now, we probably have something around, I'm guessing, $3,000 plus or minus a little I, bit. I would guess probably under a little bit. Yeah, yeah, once we get all the invoices. And we did offer remediation agreements many times, and they would, uh, the owner said, my work will stand for itself. Yes. I'm not signing it. He was offered it. He's yes. not. And he 
at that time decided not to uh, sign. Correct. And, but now, now work's been going on and no uh, uh, work, uh, no building permits whatsoever <laughs> have been issued. Correct. And is there any power or water or plumbing in this? No, building? all so, utilities have been disconnected. We so it's uninhabitable right correct. now, as is. Correct. Okay. And uh, are all the taxes paid? Do you know? Uh, as far as I know, the taxes are current are on that parcel. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to get some clarification. Yeah, hey, Pastor, you can approach the commission. My name is Jed Knight, and I'm the pastor of uh, Victory Temple Family Worship Center. And the house next door to the church uh, is what uh, we're talking about. And I would like to say that uh, in reference to the statement that I refuse to sign any agreement, uh, I would like to say that is that was not my intent, and I never knew that I needed to sign any agreement because we was in the meeting before, I had stated that I had been working out of town. And uh, this ch the church secretary, which is behind me, she did get the letter. I, don't, I wasn't informed that we needed to sign anything. So I had no knowledge. I would not have refused <clears throat> to, to sign something to uh, give us more time to do what we needed to do or come to some agreement. So, no, I did not refuse. I wasn't available. You, you, you never saw the remediation agreement, is that what you're saying? Uh, when, I, when I got the letter, I gave it to her because I'm, I, was, I was in and out all the time. I was only here on Sundays for a long period of time because I was working out of town for a year and three months. So I would come in on Sundays and sometimes every other Sunday, depending on how far I was working out. So uh, I... I I dropped the ball by not reading it myself, but uh, I did not even read it. I did not know to sign it. I passed it on to Mother Green, and uh, the other the other things that we got, I, I'm not I'm not even aware. I have I have no recollection. I, I uh, <coughs> Pastor Dighton, I uh, Dighton or Knighton? Knighton. Knighton. K N K N I G H T E N. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, as I, I'm trying to recollect, I'm trying to go back through some notes. Uh, I, I, I'm recollecting that someone from code enforcement did meet with you personally and give you the remediation agreement. At that time, you, I could be wrong, I, and I'm asking some clarification here, and you said no and said, my work will, you will see, I'll have this corrected, my work will speak for itself, and that was back in March or April, if, I am, if my memory serves me correctly, I don't know. That's what we have in our notes. Well, now I was I talked to Lee personally, mm -hmm. uh, face to face, and with remediation. She had a remediation. She there. had she had no letter for me to sign. When she told me about the meeting, I told her that okay, I uh, would do my best to be at the meeting. I said, in the event that I don't make it, this is the work that we're doing. Can you let Can you at least let them know that we're doing the work? And that's where we left that. I did have to go out of town, so I did not make it to the meeting. So, but I did talk to Lee because sometimes I was in, maybe like on a Tuesday, just in and out, or on a Thursday, just in and out, and I just happened to see her. But, uh, but, but the, uh, at no time, I just want to say, at no time would I refuse to come to some reasonable agreement with any authority. Because I know that when you are in disagreement with authority and rebellious, that is to your own demise. I know that. So when you uh, when they presented you with the remediation agreement, did you understand the process and how the I never, steps you needed to take? I never, I never saw that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I did see that we needed to be working on the building, okay. and I did tell them that we were. That's what I expressed. Lee, we are working on the building. She said, "Well, you need to work on the outside of the building." Yeah. Yeah. And I did do some work on the outside. I did put a new window in on the outside. I did put, uh, I did repair the roof on the outside. And I did put two doors in. Uh, but what happened is that uh, the last time I had an encounter with the city or with, uh, uh, with uh, anyone is when they came to take up the, uh, to cap off the yeah. sewer line. 
and that's when a lot of people merged on the property. And, I, and that's when, that was the first time that I heard that I needed to get a permit. Now, where I come from, I'm a contractor, but where I come from, from Texas, we, at that time, years back, we did not need a permit if it wasn't structural. You know, putting in the window is not structural. It, it, it's not, it has nothing to do with the foundation. It has nothing to do with the structure. Putting siding on is not structural. So uh, when, when I understood that the city was serious and it was pressing, uh, I went and started uh, borrowing money, asking for donations, and I went and got all the windows and put all the windows in. And I went and got siding, and I put the siding on. And that's when everybody merged on the property and go, well, what you did was nothing because you never got a permit. And that's when I replied that if I would have known to get a permit because they've been telling me you need to work on the building, you need to work on the building, this is my first time hearing about permit. So uh, what was everything that needed to be done on that property? Um, what we had put on the remediation agreement that was sent out back earlier in the spring was to repair or replace all the siding, mm -hmm. uh, repair or replace all the windows and doors, and to paint the exterior of the structure. Has any of that been done? Um, I know that they've been working on all of those items. I, I'll be honest, I haven't personally inspected it in the last you know week or so, so I couldn't say if they're complete, but I know that all of those items have been under progress, but as we said, none of them have gotten permits for any of that work. And so uh, this is me. I'm proposing this. If he was the... Uh, Before you get propose the, something, can I, can I ask him a question? Go ahead. Go ahead. What do you intend to, if we, uh, if, if the commission was to adopt um, option number two that Mr. Waters was talking about, what are you going to do between now and the 21st of August when you have that court appearance? What's uh, your intent? Option number two was what? Option that was was us kind of doing nothing at this point, letting you let it, letting you go in front of the judge the twenty first the continuance. So what you know what are you going? And the judge I think implied that it might be good for you to bring a lawyer right to the to that particular court appearance. So do you have any intention of doing that? Or I mean, if we were to adopt option number two that Mr. Waters recommended for our consideration, well, if 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 you all adopted option number two. Of course, we would have uh, a, no choice but to uh, obtain legal counsel. We would have no choice because this is this this piece of property is very valuable to us uh, for future asset to the church because it can be used for many different reasons. So there's no way in the world we would want it torn down. Uh, now I don't know what option that was, but the option of a possible consideration pulling permits. I have no problem doing that. All the windows are in. Uh, the siding has been repaired. The new siding is where the siding could not be repaired. Uh, and it would already be completed, but uh, uh, the building, building inspector, should name, sir? Yeah, you had to wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, had to wait. Yeah, he, 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 he gave me a stop order. Yeah. Because I was digitally trying to satisfy the city getting everything done. So every window is brand new. It has a pretty door on the front door. It has a standard door on the back. And I was about to put on the trim around the windows and paint the building to satisfy the city when they said, no, you need to stop because you have a permit. So I would be more than glad to go get permits, whatever they cost. And I am willing, listening to uh, what uh, uh, the lady said, that I am willing to do my very best to compensate the city for, for money's already spent. Because I, I understand, I'm a contractor. It took somebody time and money to come pull meters. It took somebody time and money to come pull gas lines. And I understand that. And, and so just say if we did agree with the uh, remediation agreement, how long would it take for you to complete the, to complete the work? And that, that work will be completed within the next 10 days. All I gotta do is put the trim on and paint the building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I will say too that this morning at the hearing the judge indicated that um, if the city is satisfied that all items are completed that the work's done that we've been reimbursed for our cost or have reached a, a payment agreement with the owners um, prior to the hearing on the 21st that we don't necessarily need to actually 
hold the hearing that the city through our council can let the court know that the city is satisfied that the matter is closed. Um, so, you know, to save the city and the property owner the time and expense of that legal process if the city is satisfied that the that the um, issues are resolved prior to the 21st. Would a new remediation agreement include what we what we would request the yeah. absolutely yeah. and in I would terms of I, money? Would, I would request a remediation agreement so that it's in writing so that everybody's on yes. the same page. Mm -hmm. yes. So we've talked about um, uh, the reimbursement cost. We've talked about permits. We've talked about the original issues which are uh, in process. The final thing is. Um, we believe somebody's inhabiting the structure. We need to get in there and die test the sewer to ensure that there's a functioning sewer. So that would be the final thing that we would need to make sure that there's a functional sewer in there. Otherwise, it's not, um, it doesn't meet building codes for habitation. So those would be the items we would put in a new remediation agreement that we would require signature on, I think would be the smart thing. Okay. For night, is someone living in that building? No. I'm, 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 in, I'm in and out of the building. Because you know, I, uh, I I do have stuff in there. I go get stuff in. I take stuff out. You know, uh, so I have personal I have personal property in the building. I have stuff in the garage, and I even have some stuff in the church. Because you know, but once I finish fixing it, if the city uh, gives us the go ahead, once I finish fixing it, I'll make a decision to to rent to rent it out or to turn it into like a little fellowship hall for the church or whatever. Well, I'd rather see it used than not. But yeah, you know, I mean, if it's if it's used and if it's not a blight on the community, then I'd be okay with a re remediation agreement. Yeah, yeah, that's what I propose as well. Don. With the elements of what the city manager just right. said would right. be in that remediation. Right. Right. And I think you, I think you need a deadline before right. the hearing. Yeah, thirty days. So when is the hearing? August twenty-first. Yeah. So thirty yeah. days. You can have the work done in ten. You got and, an extra and, twenty. Uh, <laughs> not a problem. Uh, I'll make a motion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, move that we uh, do an extension until, what, what is the date again, Mr. Waters? I think the date we'd be looking at would be until August 13th, one okay. week prior uh, to the... And uh, our first regular meeting in August is, uh, anybody have a calendar handy? Yeah, so I think August 13th is the regular meeting for the commission, and sure. I think what Mr. Waters may be suggesting that we could review it again at that time yes. yeah. uh, and okay. see that the remediation agreement has been completed or not. Okay. So we could, have, we could have a remediation agreement drafted probably in the next 24 hours, notify mm -hmm. Mr. Knighton. He would need to sign that with the date on there, all the items, um, and then he'd have till the 13th, uh, and we'd notify the commission um, when and if he signs the agreement. Okay. okay. Mr. Mayor, I, I move that we... Uh, Extend uh, the demolition, uh, or uh, not abate the demolition, but suspend the demolition of 795 Spruce until uh, August 13th, 2019, or until uh, a remediation agreement that will be signed uh, that. We agree to that all the items on the remediation agreement are taken care of on before August 13th to include all the monies that have been spent, and it's somewhere in the ballpark. I'm saying 3000 It's probably a little bit south, uh, less than 3000 uh, But all that is taken care of before August 13th, complete redone, and all building permits, et cetera, have to be going. I think a Please. payment plan like you talked about would be good too. Yeah, we could we could on that item if the commission elected we could we could set up something where um, you know uh, this, the building maintenance stuff has to be done. You have to grant access for sewer die testing, uh, show proof of permits, and then maybe work with Mr. Knighton to set up a payment plan on the costs. Maybe exactly um, that sounds good because you know that's a that's a hefty amount of money for a small organization. Correct. Yes, sir, I agree. So is that a sum? I mean, is that yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's okay. But, but, but do that's we need to uh, second that. decide what the <laughs> payment plan is here? <laughs> I think you're authorized. I think you're just authorized. Second authorized. 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 City manager. Okay. <laughs> uh, motion has been seconded. Uh, <laughs> begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Five zero. Thank you. Good luck, sir. Thank you, sir. We'll be driving by and checking you out. It's pretty. Next item on the agenda, Budgeting Capital Improvement Program, CIP presentation. Melissa.
screen to get up. Mr. Mayor and Commission, uh, this is the annual uh, presentation of the city manager's proposed budget. As you'll see this year, it's the 2020 operating budget and the 2020-2024 capital improvements plan. We'll talk about this more tonight and then over the budget meetings on Thursday and Friday that we combined uh, for the first time the operating budget and capital improvement budgets. There's a number of reasons for that. The capital budget uh, we typically do in the fall, uh, but this year the, those budgets are combined into one process. So what I'm going to do tonight is give you an overview of the budget, the budget considerations, the highlights of the budget. I'm going to preview a little bit about what we're going to speak uh, to Thursday and Friday as we go department by department, division by division, organization by organization uh, through the budget process. Um, so the budget overview. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the first bullet point. Uh, the budget that I will present to you uh, tonight and then Thursday um, is a balanced budget with no millage increase. Um, there's a redistribution to focus on roads. Roads has been a priority, top priority of the commission. Uh, we have heard that um, and a top priority of the public. And the 2020 budget increases road funding by 48% to $2 million. Um, briefly, five years ago, we were at um, $850,000. We went to 1.35 million. However, the year we did that, we started the five-year project on 20th Street. So we haven't seen what 1.35 million looks like in the neighborhoods and on the arterial and collector streets. But um, we know that there's more demand than that. 20th finishes this year, so that money will return to the road budget. And we supplemented that to the uh, tune to a total of $2 million for roads. The budget includes a rental property coordinator. Um, as we have spoken about is a commission priority and has uh, appeared at a couple study sessions is in the budget We've added a civil engineering position uh, This uh, position will be funded by resources traditionally allocated to contracted engineering work on street and street related projects What that means is every year when we issue bonds for our road projects and every year when we do our sidewalk programs we hire uh, engineers to design those projects we believe that with just street work and sidewalk work, we can more than pay for an in-house civil engineer. This will also help with other projects throughout the city, and it will also help on inspection costs. Um, so there is no increase to the budget for this position. It will be absorbed in uh, what have traditionally been contracted engineering services. Uh, quick but important note, we will still have contract engineering work for the city for specialized work. Stormwater work a lot of time uh, with hydrology and, and water modeling requires especially. Uh, but the civil engineering position, we expect to handle a lot of the day-to-day -day civil engineering tasks. Uh, this budget includes an investment in city employees. Um, the commission has been briefed over the last couple years um, about the compensation and classification study that we did that we hadn't done in more than a decade. Um, we implemented the, the first of that uh, this year, mid-year. And because of, of the size of that and not wanting to have an impact on the budget or the mill or increasing taxes, I've stretched that over five years. Um, so you'll see that. You'll see the number. You'll see where the breakdown is as we go through the budget process. Um, and then a note that I, I brought to you last year and is just a continuing issue um, that we deal with is the continued uh, subsidization of the community center operations. Um, that's, ex that's essentially operating costs exceeding revenue. Um, there are many city functions that are not designed to break even, that are subsidized. Your recreation programs are often subsidized. Your aquatic centers, your community centers, they're, they're done that way so that you can keep rates affordable for, the, uh, for your residents. The community center rates are very low compared to comparable, um, but that's the way that we've gone and we've budgeted that way. So I'm not ringing any alarms. I'm just continuing to let you know that operating dollars are having to go to subsidize the community center and uh, minimally the recreation uh, program. Some budget development considerations that we went through. So we combined, um, or I decided to combine the capital improvements plan and the operating budget to create a more comprehensive view of city services, programs, and resource allocation. Road discussion happens at CIP, but we set the millage that funds the road during operating budget. So there was always that delay and that disconnect between those two. And so much of what we do now um, intertwines between the CIP and the operating budget. Um, so those, project, those processes have been combined this year. 
uh, work to maximize uh, funding allocated for road maintenance. Um, so where we where we uh, were able to realize the 650,000 to get us to 2 million was in the CIP, which was another reason um, to combine those two processes so that we could see that uh, that whole picture. Um, addressing the city uh, commission's adopted goals that was on the mind of um, uh, myself and the executive budget team, which is Taylor Tedder, our assistant city manager, um, and Ruby and Brandon from our finance department who put this budget together. Uh, and we continue with the management of the transient guest tax revenue, um, uh, recommending grant programs, increases to grant programs, marketing efforts, and then of course Camp Leavenworth. A little out of order here. Um, and then another thing that really shaped this budget was implementing a portion of the commissioned uh, employee classification and compensation study and how, and how we were able to fit that into the budget. You'll see uh, as we go throughout tonight and then also the next uh, two days, Thursday and Friday. Uh, this is a slide I've updated for this year, but a slide that we've had, I think I started it a year or two ago. This just goes to show you with our mill rate, our city supported mill rate, um, which is 26.899, that doesn't include the library pass-through. Um, what uh, somebody with a market home value of $150,000, um, what they pay, they pay they would pay in city taxes $38.67 a month. And what do you get for that $38.67? That's police protection, snow removal, street repairs, uh, the community center, animal control, fire protection, code enforcement, all of your parks, playgrounds, and pools. Um, which of course have user fees, but also um, are largely subsidized by the operating budget. Capital improvements and of course health and safety inspections, just a snapshot of, of what the city does um, with its portion of the tax dollar that each resident sends. Revenue highlights. So the city uh, experienced an increase of 3% in assessed value um, from 2019 to 2020. That looks like a big number, and it looks like that would increase your revenue in the property tax 3%. A lot of that increase is in tax-abated property. So while it comes in, it goes back out. Those would be TIF districts. Those would be NRAs, Neighborhood Revitalization Act, which is any investment from the river to 10th Street and um, from Spruce to Metropolitan. So all new improvements in that, um, based on a sliding scale, those tax dollars go back to those people or those uh, entities who have made that investment. Uh, so a lot of that growth um, does not come back to the city, but it is positive. It shows positive growth in the city. It shows investment in the city. The next item is uh, total sales tax and tax funds uh, increase about 3% or $433,680. Uh, and then uh, our other revenue streams. Uh, so the property tax net, net gain was $221,818. Franchise fees increased. Uh, motor vehicles. And the only decline in our revenue structure was court fines and fees. Uh, we uh, budgeted for 2020 a decrease of $50,000, um, which uh, is a small percentage of that budget. Um, we'll talk about this more tonight, but then really get into it over uh, Thursday and Friday is rates, refuse rates and sewer rates. Those are the two utilities the city um, uh, charges. Uh, sewer rate increase um, is due to a complete reconstruction of the 1990 or 1972 final clarifier, which is... Um, at least um, a quarter of a million dollars that's going to be required early in the year. As we talked about in the sewer rate study, we do not have a capital reserve, so we pay as you go financing. So when something like that comes up, the complete replacement of the clarifier, it has to be paid for by rates. So that's where that came from. Um, refuse, there's a number of reasons for that, and we'll get into that on Thursday and Friday when we go through the refuse rate increase proposal. Uh, the general fund has a budgeted reserve of $2,727,289, which is available to support unanticipated revenues. That reserve level is, uh, is at 31%. The city's stated reserve goal is 16%. So um, with, along with uh, the millage, uh, no rate increase in the millage rate, um, this is a good sign of financial stability at the city that we're able to keep our uh, budgeted reserve um, at 31 percent. This is uh, just a summary of the purposes of uh, places of revenue. Where do we get um, our revenue? Uh, as you can see, 45 percent of the city's revenue is sales tax. That's uh, unique to the city in, in this county. A lot of uh, cities in the county are driven um, more so by property tax. The city of Leavenworth has a strong sales tax base, uh, which helps us keep the property tax levels low for our residents. Property taxes only make up 19 percent of our budget. 
franchise fee 16% um, and down from there. Um, here's within the city. This does not include our enterprise funds, which would be like sewer and refuse or our federal dollars that come through to fund uh, the housing office. But our general fund dollars, police department and fire department together um, uh, constitute, of course, the majority of the budget, 63% um, of the budget. Uh, go to police and fire, public works, 14% uh, um, administration, which includes all of your uh, human resources, finance, city clerk's office, city manager's office, are 18% of the general fund budget. Some expense highlights. The Riverfront Community Center requires, and I, I spoke about this in the overview, about $400,000 of operating subsidy from the general fund. Um, the only way to reduce that uh, would be to decrease expenses, but that is just hours run. A lot of that is driven by utility costs at the community center, just operational costs. There's nothing extra that goes in. It's staff uh, to man or, uh, or staff the building, utilities and costs of running it, or increased fees. Um, we've budgeted for that subsidy without a tax increase, so um, that's a condition that the commission could address or not but it's in the budget with no tax increase. The inclusion of 62,000 for the, uh, that's total compensation salary and benefits for the rental property coordinator. Uh, increased city contribution for KPNF, uh, police and fire pension system, and also the CAPERS pension system. And then health insurance costs, as the commission uh, may remember, um, we budget a number that we have a rough idea from our broker and from our carrier, but we don't actually know that number till the end of the summer, or the beginning of the fall. But what we do is we set a max. So we will not come back to you for a higher than 8%. If it comes in higher, we'll reduce our benefit. We'll work on something with our carrier. So the budget, uh, we won't come back asking for increased budget authorization. 8% uh, is, where, is where we will be. And then um, I'll get into employee compensation in a minute. The 2020 portion of the five-year phased implementation of the employee compensation study is 268000 that will decrease as the years go by. What we did is the larger increases were stretched out over five years, the shorter ones uh, one or two years. So the bulk of your employees will receive it in year one, two, or three. It really starts sailing off in year three and four, and then year four and five will be much lower. It'll just be the employees who had the largest um, increase. And those are all through the ranks um, and all through the departments based on uh, a study done by Springstead on the market and the job duties and titles. So the employee compensation is recommended, it will be recommended in the budget, um, that the 2020 employee compensation plan include a 2.25% across the board increase for employees implemented mid-year. The compensation plan is slightly below those being provided by most municipalities in the region. However, with the increase, um, the budget includes that 268000 set aside for phased implementation of the study, um, which then brings our total employee investment in line with other communities. Um, I do want to uh, mention that we went from a 3% across the board, and then when we went to implement the, the first half year of the compensation study, um, I dropped that to 2.75 to help pay, offset that, and then um, we felt like we needed to help offset that cost again and uh, without increasing the other parts of the budget, um, so 2.25 is what is going to be recommended. Um, a lot of employees did not uh, benefit from the compensation and classification study, so that was a number that I felt as low as we could go and not penalize those employees who the market didn't indicate uh, deserved an increase in their pay. But besides the increase in pay, I mean, this study, did it establish new brackets or, or for the various right. positions? Right. It was, it was a, a comprehensive overview of our position, our grade structure, our uh, salary structure uh, increased, uh, changed ranges, both up and down throughout the city. Um, so as we finish the budget process, we could do a, we could do a study session and brief the commission on the total impact, but it, it redid um, how we align our employees, uh, their pay scales, and, and their compensation. And that was a study that was done uh, against the Kansas City metro area? They picked 22 peer cities, okay. I believe, um, that would be comparable. Not all of them responded to every position. Not all of them had the same position. Um, if there was less than two, I think, they weren't used. They did other metrics. They were also based on employee evaluations of their own position that were uh, vetted by their supervisors. It was an extensive process that we went through. How long did that process take? It took about a year um, to get the whole thing. You're satisfied with the results? I am. Mr. Kramer, would you go back two slides, back to the health insurance line? Yes. Uh, 
You say health insurance costs are budgeted to increase 8%, which would equate to 310000 The increase is not 310000 is it? Yes. So we're paying like $3.8 million annually in health insurance? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's on the claims every time. I realize that, but we have, what, 225 employees, approximately. Mm, 275. 275, so we're at... But, 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 we also have a lot of retirees on our... Okay. On our, on our okay, so, but just on the active employees, that equates about $15,000 in employees. Yeah, and that's, and as we go through the budget, especially the, the overall on uh, Thursday, we'll get into the health insurance costs okay. and where we are. Um, as we go through, it is a substantial cost. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's uh, one of the biggest. I, I know it's high, uh, but maybe that explains it uh, because the 275 employees, 3.8, 3.9 million dollars, we're looking at, you know, 15 grand per employee, but there's a bunch of retirees on there too. Yeah, well, there are, and there's um, uh, family plans with large uh, groups, there's single plans, right. there's, there's right. a lot of variables. But, but our out of pocket. What the city pays is three point nine million approximately, and employees obviously they the cafeteria do they include the family? Right. We'll go through the benefits. Yeah, we'll go through the benefits. But yeah, we are. I mean, cities don't make anything. We are a public service uh, service industry when it's people um, that do the work. So the majority of our costs is salary and benefits. Yeah. Okay. And, and that three point nine million. Just let's say, let's say I'm an employee. I know my. <laughs> yeah, that I get paid. So I want my family and I have to pay an extra two hundred dollars a month. Is that two hundred dollars a month Thank including that three point nine million? Because you So we pick up the a percentage as they everybody picks up a percentage of buying up to a family plan. The city doesn't foot the whole bill for the No, I understand family. that, but when I throw in my two hundred dollars or whatever right. it might be, is that part of that three point nine million? I don't believe so. That's full city no. costs. Yeah, yeah, that's full city that's costs. City cost. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Just yeah. want to understand. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um Okay, so uh, just two slides on the capital improvements program since we have added that, an overview of that. We will talk about that Thursday morning uh, It's the first item up. Is the inclusion of $650,000 in the CIP sales tax fund to go along with the $1.35 in GO bonds. So where did we get that from, just briefly? We're suspending the curb replacement program. Um, that's about $116,000 a year. That doesn't mean we won't be replacing curbs. We'll absorb those into project costs. Um, uh, we've cut the sidewalk program in half. Um, we still have left 192000 I believe. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll get more than just half the work because we'll have the in-house civil engineer so that 192 can go to projects and not necessarily design or inspection. Um, uh, and maybe we can do a lot of work with that if we, if we maybe work smart uh, and try to maximize those dollars. And then the rest or the remainder of that increase was the organic growth and or foregoing a couple other projects in the CIP. Uh, something that dropped off, um, we rather than reallocating that to a new project, we put it into the roads. Um, and then some of the organic growth in the sales tax funds, that's how we got to $650,000. Uh, you'll see the budgeted for the long-awaited uh, replacement of the 1992 Fire Department aerial truck. Um, we'll start next year uh, with bond payments. The first bond payment, I think, scheduled for 2021. Uh, it's a $1.4 million piece of equipment. Uh, the replacement of six city vehicles, a standard um, uh, item every year, including four new police patrol vehicles, which is the standard cycle on police uh, vehicles, about four a year. On de ongoing debt allocations for the business and technology park, Thornton Street reconstruction and 10th Avenue Street projects. Both of those uh, bids open tomorrow at 3, so I'll let the commission know um, Thursday morning how those bids opened up. Um, the animal control facility is still on the books, as well as the 2nd Street over 3 Mile Creek project. Uh, the replacement of playground equipment at Doherty Park is included. And then a variety of equipment and tools to allow the streets division to more comprehensively and, and efficiently work on road repairs and pothole patching. One of the things on there is an asphalt hot box. What that does is when you get asphalt, it comes at a certain temperature, and then the clock starts ticking. And once it becomes a certain temperature, it's hard to deal with. This hot box keeps it, I think, 48 hours in a usable form. So you can get more at a time, and you can work longer um, with the material and make less material run. So, uh, there's a couple other things, plate compactors and stuff that will allow us to be able to do more uh, in a day on that kind of work. Minimal cost overall on the CIP, but big operational changes. And then um, a budgeted, continuing with uh, improving the aesthetics, a budgeted uh, essentially $25,000 for repairs uh, to painting, uh, repairs and painting to restrooms, concession stands, and shelters at various parks, um, sprucing up our buildings, uh, replacing soffits, uh, repainting. Uh, replacing roofs on small shelters, stuff like that, 
Um, Steve's identified where exactly that 24,926 is probably why it's so uh, approximate. It's not just a bulk amount to do. He's already identified, which we'll share in the CIP process. Uh, and then the final CIP overview, continuing investment in the future, debt payments to the business park, the animal control facility, fire trucks. We were just notified last week that um, through a, an arduous process, we maintained our ISO certification for uh, fire rating, which is, which is a very important thing um, for the city. Uh, so we need to continue to invest in the fire department to keep that rating where it is. How often do they come and give us that rating? About every five, about five oh, years, every good. five years. Good job. Um, uh, the investment in amenities, paint and repair to the structures, playground equipment at Doherty Park, and then work on the Cody Park ball fields, uh, which get a lot of use. Improvement in roads um, uh, that what we talked about in the subsidization of the community center uh, project over time you'll see in the CIP. So as I do each year, the conclusion uh, to the Tuesday night presentation, the recommended operating budget um, and the CIP reflects a continuation of modest yet positive growth in revenue and service delivery. The budget uh, proposes to invest further in employee development, workforce stabilization while making small enhancements in public works, blight removal, parks and recreation uh, with a completely flat, flat city mill. Um, and it's actually technically a decrease in the city millage, it's, um, which is important. It's not just flat. It, there is a small reduction. Um, um, in the city millage, 18 hundredths of, of a mill will be reduced uh, next year in, in this budget. Additionally, revenue trends and careful consideration of expenses in previous years has allowed the city to sustain pre-recession reserve levels, uh, which is very important when you go out for bonds um, and when you do some of the projects that we're doing to show that commitment to strong fiscal responsibility. Um, that's all I have tonight. And again, uh, the budget sessions on Thursday and Friday this year start uh, 9 uh, to noon Thursday and then 1 to 5 Thursday and then Friday morning back at 9. Uh, they are open to the public. We don't show them live, but we record them. Um, and so we'll be back in here. Could you send us a copy of that PowerPoint? Absolutely. It's excellent. Yep. Thank yeah, you. That's good. Any questions or comments? Can you do you want any questions now or should we wait till budget? Just have a couple. Uh, I would probably wait too much, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, well, let me ask you. Yeah, I know we're suspending the curb uh, program this year, 160,000 for next year. 116. 116, okay, 160. And 50% uh, of the sidewalk programs. That you see that as a one-year blip, just to. Uh, we, we zeroed the CIP goes out five. The CIP goes out five years, and we we zeroed it out all five. Um, and and it's sidewalk. a year-to-year -year decision by the commission, but we, we the sidewalk budget is 192 for five years. Okay. 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 Uh, and I know you mentioned passing the bids for 10th Avenue and Thornton are opening up tomorrow at 2 or 10 or whatever. 3. 3. three or, uh, sometime tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and some of those you want to work on real quickly. Any chance that we can have a special meeting during the budget session, just a quick special meeting, it, or do we need it that quickly to get um, some of that? Stuff? We could turn around uh, 10th Avenue. I would, I wouldn't recommend it during the budget meetings. Um, I would recommend potentially doing it um, next Tuesday on a study session, have okay. a special meeting okay. to approve so the 10th Avenue. Um, yeah. But I'd keep it separate from the budget. I'd like to say one thing about uh, all the budgets and the mill levy. You know, our mill levy is. Just a little bit less than 27 mills. Uh, that's of all the when you pay your taxes. If you're a resident of the city of Leavenworth, you pay the city, the county, and the school board, and a little bit to the state. Uh, the city portion of your mill levy is only is 21 percent. I'm not minimizing that, but we are the smallest uh, taxing entity of the three taxing entities. If you're a resident, you know we pay the county 40 percent more. A resident of the city of Leavenworth pays Leavenworth County 40% more than they pay the city. But that's necessary to run a government, to run a, a county. Uh, you know, the only thing we're guaranteed, of, of course, is death and taxes. But I think we have maintained, the city of Leavenworth has maintained a flat mill uh, levy for how many years, Mr. Dedeke? Probably 10 or 12. Yeah, 10 or 12. and. You know, before we had the sales tax increase, we kept it flat. But sales, once we had the, uh, the people pass the sales tax, we were able to drop our ad valorem taxes by 40%. So I, I'm proud that uh, we have kept our mill levy as low as possible, uh, as, as low as it is uh, in comparison to the other 
taxing entities. And I'm not saying the school is taxing too much or the county is taxing too much, uh, but we are very tight on our budgets. And thank you for the work, and thank you, uh, Ruby and Brandon, for putting all this together. I'm looking forward to Thursday and Friday. Any other comments? No. All right. Next item on the agenda, uh, first consideration ordinance, uh, amending development regulation signs. Community Development Director Julie Hurley will handle this item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commission. Um, as you'll recall, in November of last year, the Commission discussed um, or amending our regulations regarding political signs. Uh, the consensus was that we needed to have some sort of limit on how early they could be put out before elections. And the, the decision at that time was to limit it to 45 days prior to an election. Um, just through an inadvertent omission, that change got left out of our update to the development regulations that we passed earlier this year. So we are just adding that at this point. Um, so just amending that section to add that uh, restriction that uh, political signs may not be put up more than 45 days prior to an election. And this is the same regulations the county has? Yes. So we're all in, yep. we're so all in lockstep every, yep, yep. now, so there's no, oh, that's county. Correct. So, okay, we're all together. Except good. doesn't the county have a distance from the center of the street for their right of um, way? I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, I just, um, in looking at other communities, which I did after I saw this last Friday, knew this was coming up, um, it seemed to me that in, in their ordinances, there were different ordinances in Lawrence and, and Johnson County and elsewhere, but they would say things like, um, on private property as a separate thing from the right-of-way, which the right-of-way is public lands or parks or public streets or city or state. Mm -hmm. And some of them would just say city or state right away. They wouldn't yeah. say, I mean, sorry, state or federal right away. They wouldn't say anything about city right away. So we're talking about, we're not talking about federal and state right away here. We're talking about right away on private property, right? Because um, uh, we're right, talking about sidewalks sure. and putting yeah. right, right away. Right away is not private property, though. Right away, you have to maintain it, but it's not private property. It's right of way. And so the, I think what you're getting at is if we allowed that, though, then you could not ban other types of signs from right-of-ways, and that is a... Well, my, my problem is still the Broadway issue with the, right. with the sidewalks there oh, yeah. and not being able to put... I mean, that sidewalk is like 10 feet from the And the sidewalk street, is, is and then roughly... Putting it, and I'll only put it on yeah. the other side of the sidewalk. So what, what is that... What is our rule here? So it's not in the right-of-way, and right-of-way varies. Um, different streets have different right-of-ways depending on how the property was platted um, originally. And so, so if we, I put a sign we up, don't go out and um, do a survey, but um, we know where the right-of-ways are, um, and you can get it from the county GIS pretty close. Um, but, yeah. But if you, uh, and if that, you, that information does go out to all candidates that it can't yeah. be in the right-of-way. And, and then it's the candidate's responsibility to know where the right-of-way is. And it's basically... Am I correct? We've got a sidewalk in front of Usually, my house. Yes. From the sidewalk to my house is where I put the sign. From the sidewalk to the street, can't put the sign. In general, it's even, even if in it's general. 10 foot from the street. Yes. Because yeah. Broadway like has it is a on Broadway. Broadway. Yeah. 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 So even 10 feet in, you still can't put a sign there. Even though you see, even though you see signs there all the time, real estate signs are right there in the right of way. They point. they are at times, um, and again, you know, code enforcement removes those, you know, when when they're needed. Well, I just I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't. I think it's a great idea. I think the more we can limit signs in the right of way, uh, I think it makes the city. Yeah, look and, and again, that, that part of the regulation is not changing. That that yeah. part has always been yeah. part of our regulations. Yeah, that's always been part of it. And uh, it's been about a year and a half or so yeah, that, we, that, that we that we discussed. That that we discussed this previously in regards to the state statute and what we were doing and uh, what other cities were doing regarding to the right of way. So that's not changing at this point. That's already been in here. It's just the 45 days. So if there had been no sidewalk put in over there on Broadway, then you could basically put it almost no, up to the curb, right? The, si the sidewalk is no. just like a rough approximation. The right of way is done in the plotting process of the road. 
Well, that makes sense. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense to say it has to be behind the sidewalk. It's just the best rule of thumb. That, that's just a rule of thumb. And if anybody um, needs more clarification, they're always welcome to contact our staff, and we can help them um, approximate where that's going to be. Are we sure that the county is 45 days? Because last six weeks, I believe. I, because last uh, fall, it just seemed like a lot of the signs were up earlier than 45 days. Just asking. Uh, yeah, are we I, sure? I, I couldn't tell you at this point. I'm just, yeah, the 45 days is what the commission discussed in November and what the consensus was at, in November. So that's what we're. I think there may not point. be any, I don't know. Is there even a prohibition against or a limit as far as the number of days at, at, at the county level? I, I just want wanted to know that uh, before we... I, I think that's why we brought it up because right. it was uh, people were... Yeah, I, I believe year. that there is. And most jurisdictions do have a limit as to how far out they yeah. can come up. And the reason it came up last fall yeah. was because we didn't have any sort of restriction at that point. And the commission wanted some sort of restriction, and so the one. consensus was 45 days. And, mm -hmm. and I believe that is, um, I can't Google it real quickly, but I believe that we may have charged with the county because we did have, well, we had no restrictions. We, we thought we had restrictions. Here, we, we, yeah, we thought we had signs. restrictions. Everybody <laughs> thought, well, Leavenworth can't put them out to 45 days. You know, Some Bush. people put them out to 90 days, and then we found out we had no restrictions, so we matched right. the county. We have our county commissioner, Jeff Coberson, here. Um, when did you put your signs up last year? No, I'm joking. <laughs> the county planning zone goes by the state statute. It's 45 days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Thank okay. you, sir. I knew that we matched. Thank yeah, you. Appreciate it. Well, that's, that's it. There we go. Uh, do we have a consensus? Yes. Yes. Ms. Nancy? I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Back on you, Ms. Nancy. Okay. Consent agenda. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, after review of the claims last Friday, um, I move. And, and one thing I want to say about health insurance, it is the highest, the highest, or one of the highest things on the, on the claims report every every sure. month. Yeah. So, I mean, I know it is it is a big expense. I wish it wasn't because I hate that health insurance is such a big expense for everybody, but um, it is. So anyway, without pontificating here. I move that claims for June 22, 2019 through July 25, 2019 be approved in the amount of one million six hundred one yeah one million six hundred six thousand nine hundred thirty six dollars and sixty cents net amount for payroll number fourteen effective July 5, 2019 in the amount of three hundred ninety two thousand. Seven dollars and sixty-four cents. No police or fire pension. Second. Motion has been seconded. Begin voting with Commissioner Pricinger. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Five zero. Uh, are there any other comments? Our commissioners would like to make. <laughs> Starting with Commissioner Batter. No, not at this time. I think I've made mine already. <laughs> Commissioner Dedeke. No. Commissioner Pricinger. Nothing. Thank you. Commissioner Griswold? No, I just look forward to the, bu the budget meetings we have on Thursday and Friday, Absolutely. as the other commissioners do, too. No, sir. All right. If well, there's nothing, I entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So Second. Motion has been seconded. Begin voting with Commissioner Nancy. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Meeting adjourned.